Well, good Sunday afternoon. It's April the 19th, 2020, and um, it's about 6, 10 p.m. Mom, it is so great to be here with you. I hear Linda just left. Yes, she did. She came and visited with me, and I was so glad to see her. Linda is an awesome sister, and she's also an awesome friend to me. Always has been. Yes, she is. She's a, she's a sweet girl. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about this evening, if it's okay with you, is uh, let's uh, reflect on my paper route growing up. Oh, that I'd love to talk about that. Now, the first thing that I remember is I was eight years old, got a paper route, and I really probably, I might have acted 10 years old, I don't know, but I was really eight years old. And you and Dad came home, and I told you I had a paper route. Oh, and it, it worried me. I thought about it and thought about it, and I talked to her uh, her dad about it, and we thought it was a bad idea because she was only eight years old, but she was a responsible child, and um, you could trust her, and we thought about it, so we just let her go ahead and do it. You know, um, I remember Daddy sitting on the front porch, and putting his hands over top of his head like, oh, no, I'm going to be delivering newspapers, and you're too young for this. Oh, yeah, and we did. When you had a, a ball game or uh, any kind of uh, game that you had, uh, uh, your dad and I delivered your papers. I was very, very active in school. Um, I kept that paper out from age 8 until I was 17, so that's nine years, I think, yes. And... Um, I remember that as I got older, um, well, let's just start when I was younger. Daddy, he absolutely helped me, and you did too. And I remember, um, you know, I would do it by myself, but he he got to where he really wanted to help me. Yes, he did. He he liked to go out like that with you and uh, deliver those papers. He would get to, um, especially on Wednesday and Sunday when the papers were thick, he would count them out at each, at each end of the street and I'd come up to the truck, and he'd hand me the amount that I needed. Yes, he did, and he'd he'd come home. He said, "Well, we've got we're through," and said, uh, "I think we did a good job." He said, "She really is doing good on her paper route." I would run as fast as I could run, and when Dad didn't help me with his truck, I started out with um, I had a newspaper bag uh, that I carry as a satchel I carried over my shoulder. Then I had a wagon, a skateboard, a bicycle, and a car. So, I mean, I went through that paper route with every kind of vehicle you could imagine. Yes, you did, and you did great with each one of them. Thank you, Mom. And, you know, I remember uh, some of the—my whole paper route was across the street from where we lived and around the corner. So we lived on a row of houses, and then way across from us there was— uh, apartments, apartment buildings. I was kind of lucky that I had in a paper route with apartments. Oh, yes, you was. But you got it done. I think I had about 125 customers, and um, sometimes you would just go to each front porch. But then on the opposite side of the street, on Waverly Road, there were tall buildings, and you would go inside of each apartment building, and there was sometimes like eight different apartments in just that one building. Yes, they were, and it was. They were a lot of apartments there, and I don't see how you did it, but you did. Daddy said that I ran up down them steps faster than anything he'd ever seen. Well, you wasn't. You was tiny, and you wasn't overweight or anything, so you could run fast. That's true. I was always a really fast runner, and soccer kept me in great shape, and riding my bicycle and playing basketball, and just uh, all kinds of sports. Uh, that you did and that you took exercises and swimming and swimming you oh you you was at that uh, legion pool about all every time you got a chance and you was really a good swimmer and you was a um a a guard uh, a lifeguard lifeguard, and uh, you did really well and then later on we built another house and had our own pool and we stayed there 30 or 33 years, and uh, I took care of that pool every summer. Oh, it was a beautiful pool, and I miss it so much, but I I love the house I live in now a lot better than I did the one we built because of the stairs, and everything I have now is on one level, 
and it's it's just more convenient for me. That's true. Um, so back to the paper route, one of my favorite, well, sometimes it was favorite, sometimes it wasn't favorite. Do you remember all the issues with collecting? Sometimes it would go great, and other times people, um, they just wouldn't want to pay you. Yes, I know, but uh, most of them did, though, but some of them didn't. Do you know I learned more about people, young and old, middle-aged. I learned about money. I learned about trust and respect. Hey, Layla. Layla's in the background here. I learned all those things uh, on my paper route. Yes, you did. Uh, This right here comes to mind. It's a little bit off of that subject, but uh, uh, Billy and Phyllis, they loved old people, and they loved to help, well, all people they loved, but they loved to um, help uh, people that was. So up on the hill next to the apartment, they saw this lady. She was, you know, she was really... Uh, couldn't walk good or anything, so they went up there and got her, and, and I had just fixed dinner, and they brought her in <laughs> to the table and sat down, and she ate with us. I'll never forget that. I remember who you were talking about. Her, <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. Her name was Mrs. Patterson. Yes, that's who that was. She was so sweet, and she loved you all. She just loved you to death. She was an elderly lady. She was real tall and slim and beautiful. Yes, she was, but uh, she... Y'all was a leading her. One was on one side and one was on the other. And here you come down that hill with her. And I didn't know what was going on. I looked at you and I said, what are y'all doing? We were either bringing you stray animals or stray oh, people. Lord, that was, I never, I didn't know never uh, what to expect when, and when you two came home. But boy, we had a big heart. Yes, you did. You brought in stray animals and people and everybody else. Well, we get that from you, Mom. You've got a real tender heart. Yeah, I do the same thing. I mean, I I, I feed people if they're hungry and do anything I can for them. I remember one time when I came home from delivering papers, Dad was sitting at the dining room table, and he was reading the newspaper looking out the window, and you were at the side porch, and these two criminals were sitting under a tree eating bologna sandwiches and, I, and ham sandwiches, and I go, Mom, they're criminals. And you looked at me and you said, but they're still hungry. Yes, I did. Uh, I just I could not see someone sitting out uh, in the yard somewhere and, and no food or anything. So I just took them a bunch of food out there. But, uh, uh, Piff, your dad did not say anything to me. I know. When I talked to him about it, he just shook his head. I know. He just he couldn't believe me, the things I'd do like that. Well, you're a very tender-hearted person. Uh, back to the paper route, I just remember, do you remember the time I had saved, I saved a lot of money throughout the years on my paper route, but I also was able to, you know, buy concert tickets for Phyllis and take pizzas up to Linda's house, because Linda was older than me, uh, for, for Linda and her girls to have fun on Friday nights, and uh, Linda would always get me chocolate pie, and so... You know, you all gave me everything I ever wanted in life, but every time you'd try to offer me something, I'd tell you I had my own money. I paid my own way skating, swimming, didn't I? Yes, you did. You was real good about that. You didn't, the rest, some children wouldn't do that. They'd keep their money and and spend yours. No, but I always wanted to, to do my, to spend my money, and I always had a bag full of money, and I'd keep it in a drawer, and, um... You know, I I can't remember not ever having a bag of money. I know it. You always had money, and you never asked me for nothing. But, you know, I never did uh, worship money. I never cared about it. I just always had it because for some reason when I was young, I knew it was important to have some. Yes, I know. I never did, the, you know, like uh, I love money, but not like that. I mean, I don't like to keep a bunch of it. I like to help people. If I know they need money or need groceries or something, I always get it for them. Mom, do you remember when um, I had saved uh, my first several hundred dollars and I had picked out a Shawin Traveler 3. It was a blue bicycle, and it was a big one, and it was a man's bicycle, and it was, you know, like I could ride it today, and I still have it. Um, But I, I picked out this huge for my size at the time, uh, a Shawin Traveler 3, and it was uh, 
right off of East Center Street, you and Dad went down and picked it up for me. And when when I came home, you literally had left the tags on the gear shift, and the tags were hanging there. And that beautiful, sparkling blue bicycle was sitting there waiting on me when I got home from school. And they had stamped inside of my savings account book where they had made that deduction. And I was so proud that I bought that myself. Yeah, you you didn't you wanted to buy everything for yourself. You didn't want us to buy anything for you. I mean, I did let you all buy me some things, but I just I don't know. I, it made me feel good to earn money and save for things. Oh yes, but you know we we bought you things that you you know that you needed, like uh, I bought you clothes and stuff like that. And uh, if you asked me for anything, I always gave it to you. You know, I didn't. I guess I was kind of a little bit of a typical child. You never really saw me volunteering to buy a new pair of clothes. No, no, you always wanted bicycles and and cars and basketball. Uh, yeah, and basketballs and all that stuff. And um, golly, um, let's uh, back to the paper route. So, um, you know, I had that black collecting book, and you'd tear off a little tab and give it to the person that had the date on it when they had paid their bill. Yes, that's what you did. And I remember my good friend, he's still my good friend today, Chuck Ryburn, was my paper route manager. And Chuck is so funny. Oh, yes, he is. He's always uh, smiling and, and saying something funny to you. And he comes to the office sometimes. And he used to come here to the house when we had Thanksgiving or Christmas or something. And he he's something special, he is. I've never heard anybody tell more jokes than Chuck. I know. He's always got a funny joke to tell you or, or something, and he's just, he's just good to be around. The funniest thing I've ever heard Chuck do is when he uh, does an impression of an English woman talking. Oh, yeah, he does. He would just make you laugh, you know, and he loved to do uh, tell things like that. He would make me laugh till I was half sick. Um you know, I remember that I fell in love with the elderly on my paper route. I really did. And they would give me special things like they'd give me candy bars and they'd give me money that had special seals. I remember some of the money that they gave me, uh, like dollars and $5 bills and these different things that had, one of them I remember had a blue seal on it, real special money. Yeah, you did. You got a lot of gifts at Christmas and uh, your your people was really, really nice. They just loved having a paper girl because it was, you know, they'd always had boys. I was their first paper girl. Yes, you was. And they, they, they loved you to death uh, because, and they'd get buy you gifts and give you things. And you'd come home with things that they'd gave you. And they were really, they really liked you. I'll never forget when you told me that time. Um, uh, you said the same thing when I would be swimming, going off the high dive. When you, you saw me riding that big blue bicycle, you said I looked like a little cricket. Yeah, that's what she looked like on that big old bicycle. I just don't see how she held it up. I mean, but boy, she did. She'd fly on it. You know, Daddy asked me why. Would He said, why in the world do you want a bicycle that big, honey? And, you know, looking back, at the time I didn't think anything of it. But now looking back, it impresses me. I wanted that bike that big because I told him, I said, Dad, I don't want to ever outgrow it. Oh, yeah, you wanted to keep it. Um, and, you know, because you loved it so much, and uh, and we bought it for you. I mean, you we bought it, and then you give us the money back for it. Can you imagine, though, what little kid thinks about that far ahead? Um, I'm going to buy a big bicycle so I don't grow out of it. Yeah, um, I don't know anyone that would do that. That's just kind of uh, interesting. Yes, it is. Well, I, I, like I said, I fell in love with all the people on my paper route, and there was some really, really happy times. There was also some sad times. Uh, I learned about death on my paper route because the front page of the newspaper and also because of um, there was one time when I found someone that had passed away, and Daddy just happened to be with me, and I was so glad. Oh, yeah, that was real sad. And I'm so thankful that he was with you. Me too. Like I said, I learned about responsibility, trust, respect, um, discipline, and just loving the elderly. I learned all those things on my paper route. 
Yes, you did. You was so kind to that. And animals, you you was kind to them, and uh, you was always doing something for somebody. I hear Champ. He's tired. He's been outside running. Oh, yeah. You know, I also, it wasn't a big deal, but I got my first dog bite on my paper route, too. You remember when that dog bit my leg? Oh, yes, I remember that. It wasn't really bad. It just kind of scared me. I wasn't expecting anything like it, and it was a small dog. Yeah, I was always afraid of dogs. I I don't know. They, You can't never tell nothing about them or what they're going to do to you. Which you're not afraid of them now, but, you know, the thing is, if it's not your dog, it's a different story. You've got to be more careful because the dog doesn't know any. It doesn't know you, and it's just trying to be protecting everybody. Yeah, I guess so. I've learned uh, for the last few years about, you know, animals, and I have uh, two in my house here, and I love them to death, and I love Billy's little dogs, and uh, and I just, you know, got attached to all of them. Yes, me too. Well, you know, I went for, um, I didn't get, Mom, I've only had uh, my puppies for the last um, the first two I got, Blue and Ridge, was December 2015, and then Paige and Fox about a year and a half ago. So I'd never had any pets or animals until four years ago. That's right. We didn't have any animals in our house. Um, I, I was, we were too busy, kids in school, and her dad worked and I worked. We just couldn't take care of them. And I just, you know, I just didn't think about it, and I really didn't want any. Also, uh, you know, I had um, allergies, and I didn't even know what kind of pets I could have. I knew uh, for sure I couldn't have cats because I've got uh, really bad allergies to cats. But um, Linda always liked cats, but she kept them away from me. But the uh, the dogs, I'm really happy that I learned that I could have my Yorkie puppies. Yeah, it, that's about the only ones you could be around. But Champ and uh, Layla's, uh, you're not allergic to them. No, they've not bothered me so far. So um, it's it's really nice that God, I prayed before I even got my puppies and asked the Lord to guide me, and uh, he led me toward the Yorkie puppies. Yes, they're, they're, they're so cute and so sweet, and I love them. They're just like little children. They're just sweet as can be. Paige and Fox are only five and six pounds, and Blue and Ridge are 12 pounds, and that's the biggest they're all going to get. I love little uh, small dogs, but, well, I love large ones, too. Layla's pretty large, and Champ's sort of, not much, but I like, uh, you know, uh, all dogs. Yes. Um, it would have been fun, looking back, to have been on my paper out with a dog to guard me, but I never, I just never had one. <laughs> I just never did buy you. Uh, I never did get you uh, any because... Your dad was away a lot, and uh, and I just didn't want to leave them in the house by themselves. Now, I remember when I was really small, I didn't get to know the dog very long, but you had a little toy Manchester Trixie that passed away. Oh, yeah, that little dog. Well, that was your dad's dog. It wasn't mine. He brought it in, and I didn't have a heart to get rid of it, so I said, it's your little dog, and you take care of it. Yeah, but the dog fell in love with you. Oh, yeah, that dog, when I was in the hospital... The dog would not eat. You mean when you were working? No, when I was uh, having a one of you kids. I don't know okay. which one it was. Anyway, uh, he would call me uh, in uh, at the hospital and let me talk to Trixie. Trixie and uh, and uh, she would she would start eating when I talked to her. That's so cute. Yeah. I remember um, you told me that she died of cancer of the liver, and that was so sad. I remember being young and not understanding what was wrong with her, and she just stopped eating, and she was a cute little dog. Yeah, of a morning, I'd fix her uh, bacon and eggs and a biscuit and gravy, <laughs> and I had it sitting on her little table, and uh, this guy come in to fix something in the house. He said, tell me you don't put your husband's uh, food in the floor. I said, no, that's my little dog's uh, uh, food and he said, "I can't believe that you that you feed a dog that." He said, "That's better than what I eat." That's so funny, Mom. That's <laughs> really know. funny. Yeah, that's Do you remember funny. that other dog that was a stray collie that fell in love with you at Birchwood? Oh yeah. And um, they took it somewhere out in the country, Fort Blackmore, Virginia. Three days later, that dog was back covered in burrs, and it was at the back porch 
at the sliding glass door for you to open and let it in. Yeah, I know it. I, that dog, uh, I'd go outside with it, and uh, it would stay right with me, and I'd feed it, and I was so good to it. And uh, it, uh, someone took it way over in Virginia, about two or 300 miles, I think it was. Or it was several miles. I don't know exactly how, how much, but in two or three days, uh, the dog came back to, was at my door. I know, that's just unreal. Uh, Daddy couldn't believe it either, and then he started making jokes saying that that was one of your old boyfriends. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, that's one of your boyfriends come back as a dog. <laughs> of course, none of us believe in reincarnation. He was just being silly. Why, well, yeah, he's always kidding, saying something funny. I remember, uh, getting back to my paper route, I remember that every day, Monday through Friday, you would deliver right after school. So I'd get out at 3 o'clock and deliver newspapers. Saturday and Sundays were in the mornings, and I would do that about 6 o'clock. And through the week, when I'd deliver after school, I'd have a quick snack, jump on my bicycle, head to all the way across town to Johnson School, and play my soccer game. Yes, you did. You you was, boy, you was really rushed. You just, you'd grab you a bite to eat, and here you go, and play your game, and then you'd come back to the house and and eat and and uh, take a shower and uh, and get ready to do something else. Daddy always said, how come you don't have much homework? And I told him, I said, heck, I'd get it done at school because I knew when I got home after school, if I wanted to play sports and deliver my newspapers and eat, by the time I ate dinner after my shower, I could barely hold my head up. I was so tired. It's a good thing you didn't, you didn't, uh, it's, you knew your homework and didn't have to do it, but you was, you was really smart in school. Well, thank you, Mom. It's, it's nothing I tried. I, I just think that the Lord blessed me. Uh, you and Daddy both are very intelligent, and you're loaded with common sense, too. And I just think that, you know, He blessed me with a little bit of both. Well, I, I'm glad because I sure am proud of you, and and the things that you do is just unbelievable. But uh, you're a very smart, intelligent uh, uh, daughter. Well, you are too, Mom. You know something else I remember uh, as I got older in my paper route um, when I was in high school. Gosh, I had that thing from elementary, junior, middle school, high school. And uh, I remember when I was 15, I just started high school, and um, I remember I was in a sorority called SAPS, and we'll get into that another time. But on, the, on some Saturdays, they would have fundraisers like car washes and sell donuts and things like that. And a lot of times, I had to be at the radio station. So I would get up, deliver my newspapers, and get to the radio station by 6 a.m. because my shift would be from 6 to noon. And I would do that Saturday and Sunday. Can you believe that? Oh, I know it. I was so proud of you that uh, that you did that, and you were so good at it. I've got pictures that I took of you down there uh, doing your radio show, radio show, and uh, you just did a wonderful job. When you fall in love with radio, it gets in your blood. You never get over it. And, you know, I still have had a radio show for years, and I know you listen to it. It's on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on uh, Super Talk Radio 92.9 FM and in the morning about 8.05. And I know that you still listen to it and you love it. Oh, I do. I make a point uh, when she comes on to turn my radio on. I turn my TV off and turn the radio on and listen. And the kids are a little... Uh, Ben and uh, Kendall will say, oh, there's Bill Bill, uh, and they'll just stop and look at the, at the radio. That's so sweet, Mom. Yeah, it is. It is. I tell you, um, again, I've said this on another interview that we did. The 70s were my favorite years of my entire life because of playing, because of you and Daddy, and just being there with me all the time, and playing outside, playing sports, uh, having a great friends in school having the paper route, and, you know, the music, too, in that era, everything. And I just had the greatest friends in the world, and I miss the 70s. That's my favorite era. Yeah, it was. And uh, I think that you took after me a lot because I had several different uh, jobs that I went to, and 
I was just here to there and there, and 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 that's the way you was when you grew up. Yes, and Daddy had a couple of different companies, so you know, you two were my role models. You were entrepreneurs, and I guess I just ended up being one just because it was in my blood, my DNA from you guys. Yeah, because he was a very very smart, intelligent man, and um, he was into about everything, and and me too. So you took after us, I think. Yes. And um, is there anything else that you can think of about my paper route? We've talked about Chuck, and I think everybody, all my friends, too, when they'd want to talk to me after school, I'd say, look, i got to deliver my papers. You can walk along with me. And you wouldn't believe the people. Rhonda would walk along with me. Uh, I remember um, all kinds of different people have helped me on my paper route. I remember one time Jeff Coates helped me on my paper route. Just, you know, Rhonda and, and just everybody. I I don't think I have a friend that didn't kind of walk with me at least once on my paper route. I know it. I was so glad when they did that because uh, you had you had so many friends and uh, that Saps Club and all that stuff that you uh, uh, that you was over and uh, they just all loved you. And I certainly love them, but you know it just time really flies and you know I can't believe that. Uh, you know, it's just, I think that my paper route, honestly, I learned more from doing that paper route than any job I've ever had as an adult. That paper route taught me the foundation for everything that I needed to be able to grow up and have the right perspective and values uh, toward other people and business. Oh, yeah, that that right there will... Uh, has taught you how to do all all this other stuff that you do. Well, Mom, I want to thank you for um, spending this time with me, talking about my paper route, and we'll pick a great subject for next time. And um, we need to get you some dinner. I have already ate. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Well, I'm glad. No wonder. No wonder you're kind of satisfied. I didn't know. I thought you hadn't eaten dinner. No, I ate. I ate too much. I had uh, chicken. And uh, green beans and peas and corn and a piece of toast and uh, your lemonade. Wow. It was really good. I just ate and ate. Well, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, it was a good meal. It was really a good meal. Jessie, I think Jessie, she's so sweet and she's such a good cook and she, she fixes my meals for me. And she loves to. When she fixes the kids, she'll fix me something. Well, that's great, Mom. I'm glad you've had dinner, and um, I hope you have a great night, and we'll uh, get together very soon, probably tomorrow, and and talk some more, and I love you. I love you, honey, and I'll talk to you later, and bye for now. Bye for now.